Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee. Moving, moving forward. Good morning and welcome to Always Moving Forward. We've got part two today of voting. So if you miss part one, run and get paper and pencil now because we don't want you to miss anything of this. And you know what? Let me introduce uh, my co-host and my friends. We've got Jackie Duncan there, Lenore T, and we got Patricia Noni G right here. None up than Miss G. <laughs> okay, and then, then we've got my good friend. Yes. My good friend for years and years. Yes. Okay, and this is Ebony T. But before we get started, I want to tell you what Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. said. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Yes. And what matters is voting. That's our right. So, Ebony, we got a couple of questions. So, Nora, you got one right quick. I do. Um, can I vote a split ticket, Ebony? That's a great question. In August, we just had our primary um, election. And you cannot split your ticket during, um, for more than one party column in the August primary. But in the November general election, you can split your ticket when voting in the November general election. A voter participating in a November general election who wishes to cast a split ticket can vote for individual candidates or of his or choice party. So let's say you wanted to vote uh, for a candidate who's running Democrat or a candidate that's running for the Green Party. You can split your ballot in November of general election, which is really important because we just, as we stated before in part one, we just, they got rid of straight party vote, so you no longer can vote straight Democrat, straight Republican, straight Green Party. So now we have to go line by line and vote one vote at a time, flip it over, so you can't switch your ticket. If that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, Ebony, what about if I don't know where my voter location is, where my precinct is, how do I find out that information? You can log on to the Secretary of State website, um, type in your zip code, your name, address, and they will tell you what your voter location is. Um, if you don't have your voter registration card, your voter registration card will give you all that information, polling location, uh, precinct number. So if you don't have that information, you can log on to the Secretary of State website, and they are very informative. Click on the Voter Information Center, and they will give you a list of items if you had frequently asked questions, okay. where to find your polling location, all that good stuff. Okay, and that's where we can get that sample ballot too. Am yes. I correct? Absolutely. So, uh, if you wanted to know what was going to be on your ballot, you can get that information at the Michigan Voter Information Center. Um, type in. They're going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, what city you're in, what county you're in, and I printed out a sample, a sample ballot um, for my location. The print is a little small, but it's actually bigger on the screen, okay. and it's going to tell you every category that we're electing someone for, uh, governor, uh, states uh, for the legislative side, state senator, state representative, um, State Board of Education, mm -hmm. that's another title. I don't know if we talked about it, that's important. Um, Regent of the University of Michigan, trustee of Michigan State University, uh, so on and so forth. Um, we're voting for our Wayne County Executive, um, all type of Attorney General. Attorney General, yes. Okay. The nonpartisan side is very important too. We're voting for judicial candidates, 36th district. Uh, yes. Countywide, Wayne County Circuit uh, Court. So uh, those items are very important, as well as voting for our new governor, secretary of state, um, 
We also have proposals on the ballot. There are statewide proposals and there also are proposals that are effective in each community. So, for example, I don't know, they have um, the millage proposal in Warren, no. but I know in some cities such as Romulus, they have certain millage proposals that they're going to have on the ballot. Um, I believe there is a Wayne County millage proposal, um, Wayne County Community College, I'm not sure. I thought it was too, but I didn't see it in here. I okay, I, but I, I think that there may be, in addition to the other hot topics or the other hot proposals <laughs> that are on the uh, ballot. Yes. Yeah. What about um, congressional and for the U.S. congressional or oh, the, yes. for the Senate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So okay. it has those people on there also? Yes. So when we vote, we want to be sure that you get somebody that represents you in those congressional seats, okay? Um, are they going to vote? Because there's so many things that are up that you really need to take care of, like the, the tax on retirees, okay? Absolutely. And, you know, them trying to wipe out Social Security, and um, there are other things on that. Who we vote, we either pass it or either won't pass it, okay, and block it. So you got to be sure that you put somebody in there that's going to block it. If, if you're worried about retirement and that old age tax they're talking about, you want somebody in there that's going to block that from passing. Right. Right. And for insurance, we're talking about auto insurance. Oh, yes. That's okay. A, that's for the one. state legislators. Yes. They're the ones that allow it they are. to, uh, for the insurance company to audit the insurance companies or to sheriff them, to police them. So. Well, I think that if we get the right person in office, because we're, we're voting for our state senators mm -hmm. and we're voting for our state representatives, they are the ones that, so as a citizen, I'm paying astronomical costs in car insurance between mm -hmm. my car, All my children, children, my son's All car. So, you know, exactly. So, mm -hmm. you we live in Michigan? Okay. You pay, no. right? No, you live in Detroit. No, you live in Michigan. Keep going. Uh, so, so with that being said, we we get out there, we vote, we put the right person in the office, and we can say, hey, we need you to go to Lansing and fight on our behalf about our auto insurance. So it's not that they created this big old auto insurance fiasco that we had, because we pay the highest rate. I, when you say the whole country, are you talking about Michigan, Michigan, City, Michigan, Detroit? City yes. Detroit? Yes, our, our insurance rate is extremely high. So we want to make sure that we exercise our right to vote and put the right person in office so we can go and say, hey, we can get together and say, hey, we, and it's a bit, it's a, it's a, it's a hot issue. It's not very, you know, they're talking about it now. So we want to make sure we, you know, get the right person in office that can speak on our behalf and fight for us because we need to do something about this auto insurance. Absolutely. I feel very passionate oh, about yeah. auto insurance, oh, yeah. especially every month. <laughs> to make that payment. I'm so passionate about a lot. That's Social Security, everything. Yes. Social Security, yes. their pension is at stake, so it, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of issues. And people don't think that they're effect, uh, affected by voting, but if you don't vote, right, then you're not part of the conversation as far as I'm concerned. You don't have anything to say. You are the problem because you, you don't have anything to, to say. Yes, yes. You have power, and this is the people have power in their hands, and they will give it away by not voting, right? Okay, and not speaking up, or not trying to stop or change things. And see, we don't want to lose our benefits. No, oh, we, we do not want to lose them. We mentioned Social Security, and I think we're supposed to get a raise this right. year. January. 2.8. But we're supposed yes. to get a raise. But what's happening in Washington? They want to take it. They want to take it. What's happening in Washington? Our, we need our Social Security. Yes. We need our retirement. Anything that we're entitled right. to. And I'm right. entitled to. And Anything. So it's important that everyone get out there on, what's that date? November the 6th. Yes. November the 6th. Yes. Take right. yourself an apple, an <laughs> orange, some water, but wait in that line. 
Take, take your guide with you <laughs> right. so you can look through it and make your decision before you get into that polling booth. This right. is real important. Yes. And this is a real critical election, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We must get out and vote. If we're going to change some of these things that we talk about that we don't like, get out and vote. Right. Make right. your vote count. It will count. So Absolutely. don't sit home and say, oh, it ain't going to matter. Right. It does matter. Stop giving your power away. Stop giving your power away, Jackie. That is so true. Yes. So we got to do this. We got to make this happen. We can turn things around, but not if we don't vote. If we just sit and talk about it. You know what I'm saying, Renee? Mm -hmm. yes. You got to get out there and exercise your right to vote. Get away you know, from the water cooler. Get away from the water cooler. And not only that, remember what our ancestors went through That's to get right. voting rights That's in the right. South. How for many years, we just got the uh, 1964, when who was that um, uh, gave us the Voting Right Act? I'm trying to think. Was it Johnson? Johnson. President Johnson. 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 1964. This is 2018. Yeah. Come on, people. Enough. Get out that yeah. couch. Get out from in front of the TV or from down at the casinos, wherever you're going. Get out and go to the polls on November the 6th and vote. Yes. If you need a ride, call your church. That's right. Call yes. your church or give them this number here. Call these people right here, the League of Women Voters. Let them know you want to get out there and vote. You need a ride. Give them some information that... Okay, um... I'm trying to find it. I can give you their um, the website for the League of Michigan uh, Voters is um, www all uppercase l w v m i dot org o r g for links to your local leagues and additional election information, and also for other information. You can go to uh, visit the website www dot all uppercase vote v o t e four one one dot org. So you can go do the research. Get off Facebook for a minute. Get off Twitter. Go on in there and check this information out because it's going to depend on our insurance, our entitlements, and things that are important to us. So please get out and vote, family. And look this up because they should have a telephone number there as well where you mm -hmm. can get in touch with uh, uh, the organization that's in your area. But it's very, very important that you get out there and vote. Yes. Tell us something else we need to know, Evelyn. Well, we talked before about not being able to do the straight party ticket. So I agree with uh, Noni. You know, it's very important to get out and vote. We have our nonpartisan side. Mm -hmm. We're voting new school board. You mean you agree with all of us it's important. Oh, absolutely. Everybody. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. But it's also important too because uh, the nonpartisan side, we're voting um, new school, you know, school board to yes. uh, so the Detroit Public School Board. And I know there's a lot of, you know, people are very passionate about education. Right. And so you want to make sure you have the right representation for your kids, even with um, the state the statewide board of election that's going on, you, you want you want to make sure that our kids have representation too. Absolutely. You know, it's it's very important because the children are definitely our future. So yes. Now you know this is one time that I have not seen a lot of advertising on the Detroit School Board. Isn't that okay. interesting? Yes. I have seen it. It's okay. out there but it's very subtle. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean with I've seen all, one sign. It's the same sign I saw. One sign. I've seen that same sign. <laughs> we all have people questioning what's going on. That's yes. right. Okay, because why is it all of a sudden they in but they quiet now? So and then we and it seems like everywhere we turn, there's a water issue. It's water it's issues all over the state. A state. water issue yes. that's coming up. Okay. Yes. So uh, it just had the water yeah, issue so. in uh Ham Trammy. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Yesterday. Right. Yesterday. Right. right. They came out with that, the water well, issue. You know, right. they said that they behind uh, the flood no, the Detroit Detroit Public Schools, yes. Detroit Public Community Schools, they was gonna go into the neighborhood in the community and test residential really uh, water to see if it's got lead in the Of course it does. Of course it does. So if you got those galvanized pipes in your home, ladies and gentlemen. The water, the, the pipes are leaching lead into your water. 
If you don't have a filter, you need to get a filter on it, or you need to drink um, purified or spring water. That you got water. one of those old houses. That's right. You got to live. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's it. So, so, so you're saying that uh, the water coming out of our water faucet could yeah. potentially mm -hmm. not be safe? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? What, what, what if we can't afford it? What if we can't afford to go buy a bottle of water? Well, we're going to have to do something because that is very detrimental. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, yesterday they were talking about the water that's uh, in this city, another city that they were talking about. They said even if you boil it, it's not doing anything. Yeah, it's not going to get rid of it. Right, right. it's not going to get rid of it. Um, Wayne County, see that might fall under the Wayne County and the city of Detroit with the lead program, you know. Because, it might. Yeah, it does. I, I'm not for sure, but see, they have a program that deal with lead in the house, and they'll come out and they'll get rid of the lead and stuff and the paint and everything. So nobody addressed them about the water. So this is the time to see will it cover water, them changing the pipes. Hmm. Wayne County, they have a program that deals with lead in the house. So call them and see if it deals with water, and they have a package that you can pick up and read the package. Or, or make the phone call. Yeah. I want to know does it cover lead, lead in the water or pipes that leak lead? Well, if everybody said it's uh, uh, lead, yes, it's lead there, and we know these old homes, what are they going to say? It's too much money, so no, we don't have this. Well, or on the water, or no, in the house. No, in the house, they're giving you this. They give you, and they come out, they have a contract, this what will come out. And they'll help remove the lead from out of the house. No, is that the lead or the piping? Home that they have to pay? Are you talking no. about they're going to put new piping in? I don't or know about what? the water because the water issue is something that's really coming in. And, and since the flood issue and, and the DPS, the Detroit Public Community Schools issue, that's, that's something else. But you might call Duggan, Mayor Duggan, on that to see if they're dealing with the pipes. But Jack, okay. The issue is with that water that makes my skin crawl because I think, how many years have the kids in the, in the district been drinking that water? Right. I mean, even though a lot of the schools have been closed. But you know what? L let me just say this. Mm -hmm. The water is another day. Let's okay. get that. You're right. <laughs> Let's get back to voting because the six <laughs> is going to be here and you need to know what to do. That's yes. right. So, you know, kind of like summarize what we talked about in part one. Okay. what they need to know, what they need to have, and everything like that. And if you all have any other questions related to the voting, let's yes. bring those up, okay? All right. Well, these ladies are passionate about that water issue, so hey, get out and go vote, because, and so you can be as passionate as they are, because these are the issues that affect the citizens if you don't vote. Um, we wanted to make sure that everybody know that even if you don't have your ID now. It is a requirement, you know, uh, to have your to, to have some form of identification when you get ready to go vote. Michigan does have a voter identification requirement at the polls. Voters are asked to present an acceptable photo ID, such as a Michigan driver's license or identification card. But if in any event they don't have their ID with them, let's say you forgot your ID, mm -hmm. your Michigan State ID you still will be allowed to vote at the polls. You just have to sign a brief affidavit and they will allow you to vote. Um, even if you don't have your Michigan uh, state ID, if you have a school ID, it has your photo on it, it has your name on it, you still are, that's an acceptable piece of identification for you to vote. If you have your military ID, a passport, you still are able to vote with that ID. Ebony, what about a bill, a statement with the, uh, uh, you know, from DTE? A like utility bill. bill. You don't need to take your utility bill with you to vote. If you don't have your ID, mm -hmm. you can sign an affidavit oh, okay. at, the, at, the, at your polling location. The people on site should have affidavits for you to sign, okay. and you are allowed to vote. So don't let anybody tell you that you can't. If you don't have your ID with you, you are still allowed to vote on the day of election, you just have to sign a brief affidavit. So they will have the affidavit because you use the word should, but they will have They will, they okay. will have They will have Yeah. Okay, now, Noni knows a lot about that because she works at the polls. 
She's a, what do you, what do they call it? I'm a, um, a commissioner, I, not a commissioner, I'm a, on a, a board. I count absentee ballots. Oh, no. Okay. And I've been doing it for like four, four times now. But I hate to tell you all, I'm not doing it this time. Because uh, we stay there too long, we have to get there at six o'clock. We're sequestered all day, can't have no phones. All you can do is bring some food and your meds. But the last time I did it in August, we did not leave. I got there quarter to six. I did not leave till 3.30 in the morning. Wow. wow. And I just said, I'm not going to do it. It's not, I was doing it basically for the experience mm -hmm. and knowing it's a good process because I see what the, the, how these ballots are counted and so forth. And each board represents a certain precinct. Mm -hmm. And those are the uh, ballots that we count. I found it rewarding, but I'm not going to do it because I, I don't want to stay down there a day and a half. Okay, so don't let her turn you off. No, no, <laughs> this is her. This, this is Noni. This yes. is Noni. She stayed there too long. Her sandwiches and her fruit ran out. <laughs> so, you know, true. those of you who work the polls, they're going to be working the polls. Work, work there because, you know, where my husband and I go, we see the same people all the time. We, we know them that, you know, and, and this time, you know what? We're gonna take them an apple. Take them, yeah. We're gonna take them a basket of fruit so they can have something. And I suggest that you all do that too. Go in the Snickers bar. Well, that just goes to show that the. <laughs> she talking about throwing a Snickers they bar. Need, they need that Snickers bar. They, they, they do. Sometimes. Last time I went, they had some new people, and they was running around like they couldn't get it together, and. Well. I mean, now sometimes I don't take my ID. I just give them my name and my address and, and they go, go to the go book to the and look it up. up. Look it up, okay? Because I register, a, regist a registration card, oh my God, I, I don't even know where it is. Well, you're an educated voter. So <laughs> you know you, you know where, you're, where you vote at, you know your voter precinct prior to going in, you probably already know who you're going to vote for, which oh, way yeah. you're going to vote. So it's important being an educated oh, yeah. voter. Yes, I'm yes. an educated voter. When I go in, I know exactly yes. my precinct number. I know where you should find it. Um, a lot of times my son joined me uh, with voting. He's been voting since he's uh, turned 18 in every election. Um, and so we know exactly how to find his name. You know, we, we got the routine down pat, but I'm an educated voter, and it's something that you know, um, I'm very passionate about. So right, many people right. have fought for us to have the right to vote. And as you just mentioned, it, you know, 1964 is not that long ago. No. So um, it's important that we it's very important. get out of those votes. And, the, and I, you mentioned the name, if they didn't have a ride, maybe ask a neighbor or. Right, you know, right. You know, mm -hmm. There's resources out there, there are. Um, that and will help you get to the polls. And that's a good point you brought up about um, the young people. Young people, college students, get out and vote. Exercise your right to vote. We need you. Every vote counts. Yes. We want to hear what young people have to say about some of these uh, issues in our community. So please, not just um, the educated voters or the non-educated, but young people, get out and vote. Yes. Vote, vote, vote. November the 6th. Very important. You mentioned a few of those uh, proposals that were going to be on the ballot, yes. and you know, some there are a lot of groups out here that are that are very passionate about the different issues, mm -hmm. and that's another thing. You know, we got these issues on the ballot. Get out and go vote. That's right. You know, I know the marijuana issue is on the ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, gerrymandering oh, is yeah. on, yeah. The, on the ballot. Yeah. Thing. So you know. Get out there and go vote. It's very important that you get out and vote. Okay, tell us right quick about uh, residents who are in jail or prison. Yes, okay, so the question many ask, can Michigan residents who are in jail or in prison, can they vote? Or if I'm a convicted felon, can I vote? Residents that are serving a sentence in jail or prison who are currently locked up, no, you cannot vote. But if you are uh, awaiting arrangement or trial and you're still free, you are able to vote. If you have been convicted of a crime and you served your time yes. and you've been released, you are 
able to vote. My question to that is, do somebody from the election commission send somebody down there with the ballot to let them know? How would that person that's locked up get the ballot? How would they, oh, vote? they, can't, they vote. can't vote. If, if you're locked up, you can't vote. vote. But if, if, if you're awaiting trial, you're, you're awaiting trial, and you're um, not locked up. And you're not locked up. See, that's that's the difference. If you're awaiting, uh, if you're awaiting arrangement or trial, you are eligible. So vote. if you're not behind those bars, mm -hmm. okay, you can vote. Yes. Yes. If you're not behind bars, remember you can vote. You can vote. Yes. And that's okay. real important, Renee, because a lot of people that I've spoken to, they think that felons cannot vote. Um, you know, ex felons. Right. And that's good information to put out there because they can vote. And I think a lot of them may be looking for excuse why they don't need to vote. But everybody needs to vote. Yes. Okay, tell them what time can they vote? When does the uh, polls open? And when do the polls close? 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, November the 6th, and they close at 8 p.m. Yes. So you okay. can get out 7 there. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. There is no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. So I just want to say we've had a good right. time. But you have something to say? They are in line. After 8 p.m., they have to allow them to vote. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They well, close. Yeah. Okay, okay, so they, they can vote. Yes. As long as you're in line. The polls close at 8. So, so if like you're in the polling place, you can vote. If it's 8.15, 8.30, 9, you're going to get your vote in if you're in the polling um, uh, place at that time. So if you just like at the supermarket, yeah. if you're in there at 9 o'clock, you're going to be able to get that bread and milk. So I just want to say we're running out of time here. We've had a good time. I've enjoyed myself. And hopefully... You got something out of it. Yes. Hopefully, yes. you really got something out of it. But you know what? The important thing, we want to see you out voting. We want to see you out at the polls. Yes. You know, remember, we don't want you to lose any, any of your benefits. So until next week, remember, God loves you, and so do we. you enjoy always moving forward with Renee. I'm moving, moving Everybody, this is your girl Vicki Winans and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi everybody, I'm telling you everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network.